Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India morning everybody we spoke about relic criterion uh, we derived uh, expression for relic criterion then we actually derived the germ conditions across the flame uh, and the germ conditions were that pressure was continuous and the velocity was uh, jumping and we said that flame acts like a monopole monopole source and there's it creates volume in, and which is what creates the acoustic field or drives the acoustic field are there any questions from last time no okay uh, so we are now going to move to uh, a model problem solving a model problem whereby we can actually proceed to use our information about the waves a b c d uh, the left and right running waves on both sides of the flame plus uh, we include some kind of expression for the heat release rate as a function of the acoustic field and then we will try to see whether we can calculate the uh, growth rate and the frequencies so that is like the simplest problems and uh, I have drawn a uh, so I have uh, the geometry represented here. So we consider a duct which is closed at one end and open at the other end. And these are simple boundary conditions, that is the reason we are having it. <coughs> and we have a flame holder here, it can be a wire mesh or, or grid or something like that at x equal to a, and the flame is sitting on uh, the uh, sitting on the <coughs> flame holder. You divide the region into two regions, there is a region one to the left of this flame which is called uh, unreacted gases and there is a region to the right of the flame which we call region 2 which has uh, burnt gases which are hot <coughs> and uh, there is no unsteady heat release to the left of x equal to a or to the right, to right of x equal to a all the unsteady heat release is um, compacted here and we are assuming a compact heat release zone. So <coughs> on either side we can use the uh, solutions to the acoustic field which we already derived but then we will have to match the solutions for pressure and velocity across this uh, unsteady heat release rate. So that is the crux of the matter. So we will uh, we are of course making some assumptions in, a, in addition to the earlier set of assumptions. So we are looking at um, uh, plane waves. So we say that uh, our frequency is quite low that there is no uh, radial mode or tangential mode set up and it is only plane waves that are there. Uh, and uh, <coughs> we are neglecting the uh, dissipation of the acoustic field. So we are not really accounting for damping here. And we also neglect the mean flow. So and the flame length is much smaller than the acoustic wavelength. So, so d is much less than uh, lambda or we can also say that d is much less than l both kind of mean the same thing because l is the order of lambda. So given this assumption uh, we can write expression for the wave propagation on the left of the flame and on the right of the flame and then we can do the procedure which I just described. So we will first examine region 1. So the pressure there, e power i k x minus six plus omega t plus b e power minus i k into uh, you can also write this as a e power i k x but I have put in a i k x minus a that is just be consistent with the notation of McManus et al and also it makes the expressions look final expression make simpler or prettier and so on. Otherwise you do not I mean you can choose your x equal to 0 anywhere but we here we are uh, choosing x equal to 0 at the left end if you choose it as, uh, as the flame then you have some other expression. So you can choose whatever you want <coughs> any, any reference is okay. So this is I mean your A and B gets adjusted accordingly. 
So, this is the left running wave and this would be the right running wave and uh, let us call this P 1. So, all the things in region 1 will denote by the subscript 1, things in region 2 will denote by subscript 2. So, So, for a left running wave, uh, what is the relation between the pressure and velocity? You divide the pressure by minus rho c and you get the velocity. For a right running wave, you divide by plus rho c. So, I should say k 1 to be precise to represent region 1. And similarly, we can write expression for region 2. So, you will say P prime of x comma t equal to c e power i k 2 x minus a plus i omega t plus d e power minus a k 2 into so again this is left and this would be right and you can say assume this is ok so far and we can say that uh, or omega equal to k over c, omega is angular frequency which is 2 pi times f and k is like the wave number which is omega over c. Sorry? Ah, yeah. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> now, we need to apply the uh, boundary conditions. So, we know the boundary conditions are, we know that the boundary conditions are, this is a closed end. So, here velocity will be 0, this is an open end. So, pressure should be 0. So, we can apply that. So, let us say at x equal to 0, this velocity. So, it is u 1 there. So, you will get minus a 1 over rho 1 c 1 e power minus i k 1 a plus b over rho 1 c 1 e power no, sorry, here is, yeah, that is okay. Right. Or I can say A1 e power and uh, so the next condition is at x equal to f here u 1 prime equal to 0. So, here p 2 prime equal to 0. So, we have to take <coughs> this expression here and put x equal to l. So, you will get uh, c e power i k 2 
into x minus sorry into l minus a plus d e power minus i k2 into l minus a equals 0. Hope this is okay. Now, uh, so we have two boundary conditions and then we will have to enforce two jump conditions. So, just to look at it. So, if you integrate this over the distance volume or distance whichever way and say limit delta v 10 to 0 d v. Of course, you can rewrite this as one dimensional integral and then you will get the first term is a finite quantity integrated over an infinitesimal volume. So, that will go to 0 and this will come from the flux terms. So, you will get p plus equal to p minus because integral d p is p. So, p 2 minus p 1 or p plus minus p minus equal to 0. So, this will lead to a very nice condition. So, at x equal to a you will get uh, this x minus a goes to 0. So, you will get a plus b equal to c plus d. And uh, next we have the uh, jump condition for velocity. So, uh, and here we have to worry about the effect of heat release rate. So, if you do that, uh, we'll say limit delta x tend to zero, integral delta x. Well, I notice that I missed the primes here. So, when you take the limit of uh, delta x tend to 0, this first term will drop off because again it is a finite quantity integrated over an infinitesimal volume. So, this will give gamma p bar u prime plus minus u prime minus equal to integral gamma minus 1 q dot prime d x. So, you can write u plus minus u minus s we will multiply top and bottom by rho 1 and this should give Let me put a tilde over here so that I can reserve the q dot for something else. So, this integral q dot prime tilde dx I will call it q dot. Over the heat release zone. So, then I can say u plus minus u minus equal to gamma minus 1 q dot prime over rho 1 c 1 square. 
Okay, I hope this is peaceful. <coughs> Any question? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we can include damping. Uh, then you will have to have some kind of admittance condition here and admittance condition here, and you will have to um, write a modified solution which has damping built into it and, and so on. So I just wanted to. So I'm not claiming to be close to reality or something. We're just working out a model problem. So uh, in this case, always there will be uh, instability because there is no. uh, so there are uh, uh, in the end result. To let's fast forward and look at the end result. The end result will be that under some time delays, the flame will actually dry. Under some delays, flame will damp. But the region of instability will be uh, more if there is no damp. So if you substitute x equal to a in the expression of velocity, I just erased it, uh, you will get uh, u at x equal to a minus, that is in this region we write the solution in terms of a and b, so minus 1 over rho 1 c 1 into a minus b, uh, just to the right of this flame we will have minus 1 over rho 2 c 2 into c minus d, is that okay? So we have to take the jump in velocity, so u plus minus u minus, this would be, uh, this is u plus, so minus minus is plus, So I will um, say that uh, u dot prime equal to q e power i omega t, we are in the harmonic domain and so we just put that in and uh, so let us define a new symbol zeta which is equal to rho 1 c 1 over rho 2 c 2, then I can say a minus b minus zeta into c minus d equal to gamma minus 1 q over c 1. So we really have four equations now, we have this is the equation number 1, this is equation number 2, this is equation number 3 and this is equation number 4. How many unknowns are there? What are the unknowns? Huh? We know q dot or we have a relation for q dot in terms of a, b, c, d let us say, we will come to that. We, we say, I mean I already told that we will express q, heat list rate in terms of the velocity. So that is not an unknown, I mean we have a closure there. So what are the unknowns? A, B, C, D, is that all? Sorry? K1, K2. And between K1, K1 there is a relationship, K1 and K2. Because of the temperature. Yeah? So you can, it is enough to count one of them. So A, B, C, D and K, or K1 or K2. So there are five unknowns. And there are four equations. So what do they calculate? Is that okay? I mean, five unknowns and four equations. We are actually solving for omega, right? So k1 and k2 can be written in terms of omega. So a, b, c, d, and omega. Is that okay to have? 
4 plus 1 5 unknowns and uh, 4 equations. What is the catch here? Sorry? Yeah. Why no unique? We can't solve for the? No, we can solve for them. <coughs> what kind of theory are we using? What kind of equations are we using? That means for a particular uh, omega, then we No, we don't know omega. So we have to solve for omega. I think there's a very important message which we, which we discussed when we looked at uh, one problem, uh, when we are looking at some admittance on one end and we converted that to growth rate, there we discussed this. I just want you to go back and think, what, what theory is it? What kind of theory is this? I mean, what kind of equations are we solved? Non-linear equation, linear equation, linear equation. When linear theory can we predict amplitude. Can we lead to amplitude prediction in linear theory? Like if sin k x is a solution, will 2, k, 2 sin k x will it also be a solution? By definition it will be, that is the definition of a linear solution. If uh, uh, f of x is a solution, f of 2 x is also a solution. Uh, f of, um, what, what is the definition of linear theory? Uh, if you have f of x plus y equal to f of x plus f of y, f of alpha x equal to alpha times f of x. So, if you have a solution, you can multiply it by any number and it will still be a solution. So, the best you can get is, you can write uh, between uh, relations between a, b, c and d. You can write, let us say c, d and e uh, or c, b, c and d in terms of a or a, b and c in terms of d or, or a, c and d in terms of b or something like that. You really cannot get all of them, you should not get all of them. If you get actually there is a problem, right, because we do not have any mechanism in which non-linearity is acting. By definition, we have a linear framework. Is that clear? So, we have to get one equation less, not making any sense. Uh, let us go back to the closed open tube or something where we studied. Can you take a look at the notes? What are the solution? Can you please look at your notes? And you have that closed open classical quarter wave tube or something. You got cos k x or something like that as a solution, right? Yeah, and uh, two, two a cos k x, and we could not solve for a. There was a, b, and omega there, right? So three variables, and we had how many boundary conditions? Two boundary conditions, and we actually got an expression for omega. We got uh, c by four l, three c by four l, etc. Those were the roots of omega. Those were the eigenvalues. Only for those omegas, you will have uh, the solution and then between a and b we got a solution we got something like a equal to b or some other tube we got a equal to minus b so um, it's clear that we uh, we can't get all three if you get you can get amplitudes in a nonlinear uh, framework but not in a linear framework but what you can get is the relation between the waves all in terms of one or, or the relative amplitude between them and the omega which would be the eigen value and these are eigen value problems is this concept clear now? Yeah, say yes or no, so that I can proceed forward. You understood? Okay. So, so what the the catch here is to to proceed. We still have a block, that is, we don't know e to least rate, and we have to have a function for q prime right that is what you guys said right at the beginning uh, that is absolutely perfect and determining the functional form of q prime as a function of a b c d which is e, e q prime depends on the acoustic field let us say the fluctuating heat release depend on the fluctuating acoustic field that is a reasonable assumption to make I think it is probably the truth. So, uh, the acoustic field is expressed in terms of a b c and d. So, we have to write q prime in terms of a b c and d and there must be a there is a really complex relationship. Uh, and it is really not easy to determine the functional form or anything of that sort. And uh, 
Furthermore, we may not be able to model the heat release rate as a function of acoustic variables alone. In reality, any combustor will have flame holding effects and there will be flow. For example, even if you have the flame stabilized on a burner, you would have the fact that the flame stabilizing means the burner is holding the flame that means the flow at the tip of the flame is playing a role flow and heat transfer is playing a role in holding the flame there and, and so on because there is a little recirculation region where the flame holds on to and so on. So, in reality all that is very complicated to uh, model and in rea and you really have a two scale problem as I mentioned here where over this scale the acoustic variables act and over this scale hydrodynamics acts and you have to really uh, separate out the scales and write a one set of equations as we have done for the acoustics but another set of equations for the hydrodynamics. Uh, but all that is very complex and we cannot get a simple solution the idea is to somehow make the problem tractable and get a tractable solution. So, we make uh, we make some simplification about the uh, nature of Q prime and we write down a solution. So, we use what is called Croco's n tau model or sensitive time lag model and, and we use that to model Q prime. I am going to erase all of this is that ok. I hope you have written down the equations 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we are having a one dimensional problem and in reality the hydrodynamic zone or the combustion zone will be quite 2D, but we assume it is 1D and we say that the heat release is proportional to velocity at the flame hold region, uh, but delayed by some time delay and there is a scaling factor. So, the scaling factor here is this n and the delay is tau. Okay. So, that is the whole idea. So, we will take this term gamma minus 1 q over c 1 and we will model it with this hypothesis. So, the uh, way it is written is so traditionally it is written as the velocity at the cold side. So, we will write u 1 at a and t minus tau. So, T minus tau is a time, but it is not the, not the actual time at the time, but it is a delayed time and n is a non dimensional <laughs> non dimensional constant. So, this is called interaction index. and this is the delay tau. So, tau, tau is the time delay between the velocity fluctuation and the heat release. So, velocity fluctuates now, uh, but we are not using that velocity. The heat release depend on the velocity fluctuation at some time earlier. That is because uh, these fluctuations will any process has a delay. For example, if you are injecting droplets there, droplets so it's some velocity perturbation acted, and then that increased the evaporation rate, and then it burned. So all these things take some time to happen. So there is a time delay after which you are having uh, the heat release occurring. So if you are having a velocity fluctuation over a heated cylinder, so it takes a certain time for the distribution velocity fluctuations to be felt by the cylinder because the delay at the boundary layer, and after that delay, the heat will be released. So it is like if you are writing exam today, you should have studied yesterday or something like that. What you study today will affect the exam tomorrow let us say. So, there is always a, a delay. So, we also know that if you are in the harmonic domain, you can write everything in um, e power i omega t kind of thing, but you can also do this kind of assumption in time domain also and people have done that. So, we can
So, this is e power i omega t minus tau and this is the coefficient in front a minus b minus 1 over rho 1 c 1 sitting in front. So, we can simplify this and say we can use this expression for is this okay we can use this expression for q right here okay. so if we rewrite a minus b minus zeta into c minus d equal to minus n into m over b a minus b everything else goes and you will get. See there you can cancel the rho 1 c 1 and there is a c 1 left that will go with this. So, you will get a neat expression. So, all this factors here are put so that you can get a simple expression here that is all. So, this would be the new equation 4. Okay. So, let us let us collect our equations and write them together and take a look at them. So, a e power minus i k 1 a minus b e power plus i k 1 a equal to 0 this was our equation 1 c e power i k 2 into l minus a. So, we will call L minus A as B okay, just for convenience. So, let us write this down here. We will say L minus A equal to B so that I have less terms to write. And then I had A plus B equal to C plus D. So, I will write this as A plus B minus C minus D equal to 0 and then the last equation is here a minus b. So, I bring these terms over the left side and club it together with this a minus b. So, I will get a minus b I can take it out and I will say 1 plus n e power i omega tau. minus the second term zeta into c minus d equal to 0. So, I have four equations and as I mentioned there are five unknowns. We have they are a, b, c, d and omega. Well, here it is in terms of k 1 and k 2, but uh, both can be written in terms of omega and we know c 1 and c 2. So, k 1 is omega or c 1, k 2 is omega over c 2. So, we can uh, write this in a neat form so, e power i k 1 a minus e power
So, we get a nice uh, expression in metric form, but we can note that the entire right hand side is 0. Yes, is there a mistake? Plus second term plus term minus plus i here. Thank you. Yeah, there is a mistake here. Plus plus sign. Anything else? Check. Huh? Sorry, this this thing should have the reverse because one is e power minus i k, um, and the other one is. Uh, L minus A comes here uh, 0 minus A. So, L minus A is B, 0 minus A is minus A. So, is that okay? Any other problems? There could be mistakes. Okay, so, uh, we have a matrix, let us say L times uh, your variables. So, our uh, variables are contained in this letter chi or in this vector chi and now if you will have non trivial solution only when the determinant of L is 0 or the determinant of this big matrix is 0. So, So, you can try to evaluate the determinant, uh, you can first expand it in terms of uh, 3 by 3 matrices and then you can do 2 by 2 and try to get the determinant. I worked it out, you can try if you are very fast in algebra. I think, so I will just write the first step and then I leave it otherwise it is too boring. In case you missed B is actually L minus A. We are writing that for convenience. So, if you expand this, you will get e power minus i k 1 a times uh, 0 e power i k 2 b e power minus i k 2 b 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 plus n e power I omega tau plus minus minus is plus so e power i k 1 a times 0 1 1 plus n e power I omega tau e power i k 2 b minus 1 minus zeta e power minus i k 2 b minus 1 plus zeta. So, now you can write this as e power minus i k 1 a times the first one does not contribute uh, times minus e power i k 2 b into minus 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 so that is plus e power a to b Check if this is what I have here, yeah, looks something like this.
this okay So now you can collect these terms. So you can there is a e power i k 2 be coming from here and e power minus i k 2 be coming from here and so you can use e power i k x plus e power minus i k x divided by 2 is equal to cos k x and similarly sin k x is e power i k x minus e power minus i k x divided by 2 i. So if you do that and if you simplify you will get So this is the answer I obtained. You can check this. Uh, it should come straight forward. I got it in about four lines after this, and I got this. Expression. And we must remember that k one is omega over c, and k two is omega o, omega over k one is omega over c one, k two is omega over c two. So it's straightforward algebra. Just write it down. So, for a given n and given tau, we should be able to solve for omega. Okay. omega. So, this is the characteristic equation which we get. So you have to solve numerically. Uh, we also need the value of uh, rho and c one over rho two c two. And then you can solve numerically with a computer program. But if you want to do things analytically, which you always <coughs> desire because we can see things, we can assume a equal to b, c one equal to c two equal to c rho 1 equal to rho 2. Then a lot of things simplify, but we can also get a solution for t 2 over t 1 is equal to 4. If you think there is a temperature jump which is in a flame there must be a temperature jump and 4 is a reasonable value because you are having 300 degrees unreacted and 300 times 4, 1200 in the, un in the burnt zone. I think that is a reasonable number and there also you can try to you can actually get an analytical solution. I will not work it out, but you can do it as homework. I will just do this case and we to get analytical solution, but I want to emphasize that when you have T 2 over T 1 is 4, we can truly get a solution. Maybe I can ask this in the exam. So, if you do this you will get what will you get and we can also assume that a equal to b that means uh, that simplifies things further that uh, a equal to b really means that this flame is at the middle of the duct just for simplifying this trigonometric formulas. So, cos squared k minus sin squared k into 1 plus n or minus i omega tau equal to 0. So now we see if we can simplify this further. So we can uh, add and subtract sin squared k. So cos squared k plus sin squared k minus sin squared k minus This would be one. 
no I missed one more minus I missed this first term. So, you will get 1 minus 2 sin squared k minus sin squared k n e power minus i omega tau equal to 0. So, I will just take 2 more minutes if you have a class right after this you can rush. Uh, so, this would be what is this cos 2 k minus sin squared k n or minus i omega tau equal to 0. So, we can write this also in terms of cos 2 k So, we can solve for this and say cos 2 k into 1 plus half n omega tau. Oh. So, this is the expression from which we can get diagonal values, we will do that in next class.